many moons ago, I discovered Schubert's Last Andante, his C sharp minor funeral march for Beethoven in 1827, they say, which he incorporated in his last sonata in B flat major, not changing the key of that slow movement, despite of the principal key of the final sonata. That in the two cello quintet slow movement with the pizzicati like heartbeats and the choir of the strings holding like a chorale, sort of a prayer. And in this um, texture of the piano sonata's last andante, he does the same. Of course, you all know this piece. The reason I started composing was not because I thought of it as a pastime or an activity. It was because as a child I was thirsty for more music and I kept going on <laughs> beyond the last bar of the piece. It wasn't very serious practicing, but it was something that I had to go further into this memory lane. Oh, of course, no pretensions to complete or develop is just um, remaining this daydream with the soul of the composer. So in the same um, way, later when I studied this sonata to perform in the Paris Conservatoire's Prix Examen, the graduation exam, I um, presented it to Mademoiselle Boulanger during my lessons with her while I was telling the piano professor, Mademoiselle Gousseau, that I will do so. Um, it was sort of like having a two-head professor for the same piece. But the reason for which Mademoiselle Boulanger listened to it was more organically and Mademoiselle Gousseau was more technically. I don't know that they really planned that, but that's how it happened. The length of sound for the chorale and the shortness of the, um, again, heartbeats and drops. So later I had an opportunity to record this sonata uh, for a major label in France uh, at 11 a.m. when I was called that there is a cancellation in the studio by a famous pianist and they said we have the equipment, recording equipment and the piano, would you like to go and record? And I said, what about the last sonata by Schubert, which I did, but it sounded like who is he to dare to play the most philosophical final statement of Schubert when he's a young pianist in his 20s, as so many are, were, and will be. And after having been told by so many of the various other teachers I played for master class that I played too slow or not enough pedal, that I don't connect enough, the heartbeats if I call them still so, with the melodic line of the phrase stretched with the length of sound of the piano but without the vibrato of the strings in the string quintet um, avatar of the piece, if I may say so. In fact, it's the piano sonatas and the two cello quintet are like twins to me, with the exception of the middle section of the two cello quintet, which is more agitato, and this one is more singing, like a lead, leader. Yeah, he wrote so many, one more, but without singer. And so I recorded it, and you know, you went through it, you heard it, you love it, you heard others play it. Richter, with whom I studied, played it very slowly, and. I observed from close up how he did it and I didn't know how to do it. Ultimately, you always do your intuition, no matter what you are taught or learned. Perhaps fingering here and 
pedaling there, but at some point when the light goes on in front of the microphone, it's up to you to play, not explain, not express, not compare, not test. And I felt like, oh, perhaps it's time for me to play it as an andante and not as an adagio. Well, the difference is not big, but still, there is a section in the flow of events where, well, it depends on the instrument and the acoustics, um, the ultimate uh, judge of peace is the length of sound and the decay. But with the pedal on the piano, we can extend things beyond the natural flow of a bow or of a breath, sung or played on the wind instrument. Though the music is lyrical, therefore it's an imitation of voice. And this drops or heartbeats. Further, I was performing it in various concert settings and every time the whole sonata in four movements, like the four seasons for me at least, it was an inspiration, autumn, winter, spring and summer, became something of a beloved story to narrate, which reveals itself differently, quasi not fully, but in part, every time. So you don't own it, it owns you. You don't control it, it controls you. You think you do, but it don't. In fact, you have to let yourself guide, but um, gently keep it gliding. It's easy to say difficult to do, all these words, right? I agree. I can tell you that when I wanted to go beyond it, like when I was a child and playing whatever children pieces I had to play, I sort of keep going on after the final bar, double bar line. Well, I did the same for the Andante. L'âme Schubertienne in French, or the Schubertian soul. An oniric vision or a daydream imagination. And I uh, would like to share it with you today. I will play first a little bit of the Andante just for all of us to enter in that mood. And then I'll play my piece. Of course, it's going to pale right away, so don't worry. I'm aware of it. Didn't lose my <laughs> sense of proportions of reality in life. But instead of a continuation in this case, it's more like a sidekick, like... It's like, you know, you love music so much or a piece so much that it plays inside your head even after you played it or heard it or you whistle it in the street or sing it. It becomes part of your, of your existence. It's not an aesthetic option, uh, interpretational opinion, uh, uh, a scholar's edition. All these are good, but not in that case. It's just... And so I enjoyed dwelling a little bit longer with the Andante with my own notes. Oh, Mademoiselle used to say, if you don't like his, write your own, but play his when you do. So in this case, I will play mine after I start his. But I try to, um, in modulations, swans, and tensions, and hemiolas, and all kinds of effects that he cherished, to imagine that at best, he would be amused. At worst, he would just ignore it, which he should. After all, that's where I am. Nothing, but I enjoy it at my level. And I would like to share it with you. And I hope that um, it won't appear other than what it is. A moment of daydream of Schubert's last andante.
I hope you didn't only laugh, but a little smile and perhaps wonder, where is he leading us? It's not because you have the right ingredients that you have the right mix. God forbids, it's obvious. <laughs> I don't even have to mention it. But I enjoyed sharing with you this little um, promenade in my imaginary Schubert of this unforgettable Andante for all of us forever to keep. Schubert gave us this gift, even if he intended it to honor Beethoven. We feel honored to have music of his in tormented times of his life to come with this serene, profound, sometimes bittersweet, but mostly dark and at the end soothing ending. I don't know if I have to read into it other than what the music itself says and not all the feelings that go into the history of the composer into it. Mademoiselle Boulanger would have been quite upset if I confused both or justify the one with the other. As she would say, the music is what it says itself. It's its own language. You don't need to translate it. But we're human and I am more than many I accept that weakness of being human in front of this masterpieces though written by a human that reach proportions heights and high flying um, inspirations that are uh, usually in our imagination connected to the gods or dictated by one at least to him Thank you for having shared this moment of serious silliness of mine, despite my age.